the approach I want to take isn't necessarily telling people, you know, this is the, correct, the kind of career you should take, because at the end of the day, who am I to tell anyone else if we know what you want to do? But the approach I want to take is, what does a career mean, mean to me as a, as, as a Muslim? You know, as, as someone who, who lives, you know, for this world and in the hereafter, is it simply a, just about getting an education, getting a job and living comfortably? I mean, I'm not, I'm not arguing against these things. I'm sure everyone likes to live in comfort. I mean, you're not going to spend all those years studying to live, you know, in, in a little, little hut or something. That's not how you're expecting to live. And then they are going to decide best for you, you know, wh wh what your situation is going to be. I was going to school in secondary, spent all those years, I was around different kind of people. And I never used to perform well. I used to, I, I wasn't, I didn't used to perform badly, but it wasn't, it wasn't well. And there were many times where I just felt like I was, I was dumb. And you know, it didn't help with my confidence. It was, it was only really in my later years when I started gaining more self-awareness and understanding myself in Islam more, where I thought, you know what, this is the kind of stuff I like doing. I like being involved in media. And at that same time, I thought, you know what, this is something good to do. This is, you know, this is my religion. Let me let me combine them both. Yeah. And I, f I feel like a lot of people who may think they're actually dumb, they're not. They're not dumb. Mm. It's just it's just that we have this system of education that says this is the way to learn, and when you learn, this is what you're going to do with that money. But as a Muslim, is that is that really what it's about? That I just make that money and and live comfortably? What then? What's the point of being a Muslim? I'm not telling you to leave the <laughs> religion, but what difference does it actually make to your life other than your appearance? What, what you call yourself, you know, and, and the thing, you know, your prayers and all that kind of stuff. What, what's your experiences with your careers and your education? Well, first of all, you having, you've just said that making money and living comfortably, I think nowadays that's not as easy as it may seem. And going back to how the early days of school, and I think it's safe to say that we all could have done better. I mean, putting myself forward. Definitely. I wish I had wholeheartedly studied um, everything from, you know, elementary school to middle school to high school, college, um, university. Uh, only when I matured enough to understand the value of education did yeah. I study. And I remember my parents also, you know, it was like, a, it's like a, it was an act of, it's a forceful act. They would send me off to school and I thought I had to go and I really didn't <coughs> like it except the days when we were watching films on that particular day and I hated exam days. Etc. I love um, when you see the TV coming into the classroom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, oh yes, you know, today's the day. Um, and career-wise, yeah, if I was, I, I know I wasn't dumb. I wasn't dumb, but I could have applied myself a lot more. And I regret that. I do. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to learn from my past mistakes, and I want to obviously better my uh, whoever's you know the young uh, that are around me, whether that's going to be my children when they grow up, etc. Um, I'm, I was at a stage, I am at a stage where I feel career is really to just make, if I was, I was going to say make ends meet, but you know, God, God forbid, it's not that bad. I don't want to make it sound that bad, but it, we're not millionaires, you know, we all want to become financially stable. Of course, of course. Yeah. Right. And that's a need. It's not a want, it's a need in the society. As a human being. As a human being. Regardless of which society you're in, you have to survive. That's just a simple thing. 100%. And can that be done while focusing on your Islamic goals, your goals that are, um, as a Muslim, that you should have? I mean, there was this man I, I knew in, in Canada, uh, Allah Yirhamu, uh, Haj Nizar, he's passed away now. He was a great man and um, very wise and very hardworking. And he started the, the carpet business in Toronto. And I got to know his family and he used to help people so much. People, he wouldn't even know their names and he would just uh, give thousands and thousands of dollars away. People lived off this man. And one thing his son told me after he passed away, he would, he would say that um, we have to work hard and we have to make money because we have to help the people. Right. So for him, the making money aspect and having a high position in society and and having an influential position in the community was important so that he could influence people's lives in a positive way. Because if you don't have that power in, in a dog eat dog world or a world that's built upon uh, economics and wealth, then how are you going to better the lives of people in the first place? If someone's hungry, uh, they're going to be thinking of where to get their food before they're going to be thinking about um, what time I should pray, exactly. right? And, exactly. and so you want to have that part 
settle down so the person can open up and contemplate on life. Otherwise, they're always going to be thinking of survival. So that's what I'm saying. So it's, 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 it does help towards Islamic goals. In it terms does, of, obviously. If, if you have it in that way, if you look at the narrations and like it's a jihad to go and work f and bring you know, the bread back for your family, and, mm. right? That's, that's a jihad in itself. We have to look at it in a more mystical, spiritual type of way. I mean, there is a concept of, you know, having privilege to an extent. I recognize I have some sort of privilege. Um, there are situations where you, you, you might be good at something, you've studied in something, but because of your circumstances, you, you can't carry out. I'll give you an example. Um, my parents, you know, when, the, when they first came here, although my parents had studied, my dad had studied, he was a working man, but because he, he couldn't carry forward those um, qualifications to, to her, he ended up having to, to, to work jobs, w you know, which had nothing to do yeah. with... What it's, it's, like with yeah. it's like that for many. It's like that for many, yeah, because there's that language barrier. So in that, in that situation, class. that's fair enough, you know. You, you, you can't expect that person to do something different. You know, you can encourage them. But for, for people like us who have had the privilege of having that choice mm. of, you know, saying, okay, you know, this, and <coughs> having, the, you know, the experience of saying... I know what I actually like. I, for example, that I feel like there's this pressure on, on people to become certain, you know, to have certain careers, whether it be a doctor or an engineer. Again, not this thing. You know, these are honourable things. But for example, if you want to become an artist, you get laughed at. Is that what is, what is that about? I mean, the, the, the yeah, the the arts and and especially like. Bro, back in the day, the seminary, seminaries were like Oxford and Cambridge and, and Harvard. These were all seminaries before they became universities. And the liberal arts were taught and they would teach the trivium, right? Logic and, and grammar and rhetoric. And these were the things people would, would study. And this is what progressed their minds. And, you know, a lot of the secrets of life are in the liberal arts. The problem right now is liberal arts don't get you jobs. So you go more towards uh, science. Uh, I would still recommend people who have those kind of jobs to understand and read and, and, and educate themselves on the liberal arts because it progresses them. And actually, I think like I, there's this book called Into the Wild and the man inside it, Christopher McCandless, at one point, because he goes off into the wild and he doesn't want to live this life anymore. And he was a very bright young man and he was accepted into Harvard University. But he was asked about you know going and making a, a life for himself in, as a career. And he said, I think careers are a, 20, a 20th century invention and I don't think I want one. That's what he said. Now, it depends what you want to define career as, but what I see so many people struggling with and they're very hardworking people is that routine nine to five life and you can't get out of it yeah. and you're looking for jobs and as you said, you start doing whatever you do because you're just like, I mean, I have to do something, it's right? It's a necessity for exactly. the hard life. But what I would say is to work efficiently more than working hard. Smart work is better than hard work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, True. you're going to put that much work in? Cool, do that. But that period, that seven to ten, every day that you have those three hours, you use that time to be creative and think about how you can progress in different ways. And in networking is so important to know people in the field and, and to build a rapport with people. So for example, me in, in, in the academic field, as much as I can with my professors, sometimes I'll go in and just, we'll just talk. I have no questions, but I want to talk because I want to build this relationship. You never know, later on, they're going to provide a reference for me. The, um, maybe I can use the help, they can use my help with something. You're, you're, in, you're in, right? Why'd you bring me on the show? For example, yeah. what brought me to your mind? Because because we've, we've sat down, we've spoken, and that's good. We wanna, you want to increase that in any field you're in. No doubt. Whatever it is. You wanna, and you have to be creative. You have to go and find the emails of these people and send them an email and try to build something with that, right? I, th I think it's interesting how you mentioned the part of that quote of he doesn't want to have a career. Yeah. Because when, when I try to look at my life, I don't try to think of myself as Ahmed the guy in media, yeah. and Ahmed, the, the Muslim who goes home, and Ahmed, the guy who does this. I want it to be all a uh, part of a holistic package that I, who, I, who, who, I'm, who I am. Yeah. Of course, you know, I'm going to have my personal life, I'm going to have my social See, life. This is the issue of identity yeah. then. See, subhanAllah, like, I remember at one point, I was going through this. You said you have an issue of identity. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> no, it's the issue of, 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 of what, I'm like, I'm, I'm this guy, I'm that guy here, I'm this guy here, I'm that guy here, right? Yeah. So, I was asking myself, the policeman, when he's off shift, what is he? Is he still a policeman or is he John, right? Or the, or the firefighter or anyone, or me as a student. Um, 
when I stop studying, what am I? What am I labeled as then? And I was going through this for a little period of time. Like, who am I? Who am I? Like, what do I? What's mm. my label? Or what do I? What do I define myself as? Or, or what is my identity? And subhanAllah, those those two weeks, uh, for some reason, every day in the morning, that one week, especially, I was reading the same few pages of Surah Al Maryam, Surah Al Maryam, in the morning. Mm -hmm. And at one point, I was wondering, why do I keep reading these pages? And I don't know why. I kept. I was attracted to these pages, and I kept reading the same first three pages of, of the surah and on the third page when Lady Mary is coming in and she's told to fast from speaking so she doesn't speak yeah. and everyone's accusing her and they say how could you do this when you have a child and you're a virgin and you're not married and you know and she doesn't and she just points to the baby she points to the cradle and they say how can we speak to a baby in the cradle mm, and, the and then the spoke. baby sp speaks yes but what did it what did the baby say out of all the words to say of everything it could have said this baby man of God قال, قال well, obviously you're gonna beautify it with Arabic I didn't <laughs> he said I am the slave of Allah the first words this baby spoke yeah. like, that's incredible <clears throat> I'm so it's, it's such a liberating statement that's because it. having come from a background where it was just mainly cultural um, didn't know where I was going it was only when Allah decided to guide me, I guess, to, to, to show me yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, that's I, what it is. It's you know, I didn't, I didn't have that, that deep experience of let me flip off from the Quran at that time. But I honestly felt like as soon as I understood my identity as a creation, a servant of Allah, Asana. everything else was so just Allah, secondary. So you came to the same conclusion, yeah. right? As then the, the general, the, the identity, the, the package, the whole package of everything that I'm doing is under that umbrella of trying to become Abdullah, and that's a big thing. We have to try to be that, right? We, we, we're not that. Yeah. We have to try to be that. But that's Plus, a level that you yeah. have to reach. It's not automatically you know, given no, to no, you. It's an yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a issue of self-awareness. Sure. So it's something that you may not have today, you may not have tomorrow, you may not have for the next year, but as long as you want it within you, it will come to you because Allah has created and you for you that. And if you have that intention inside, then whatever you're doing is going towards that same yeah. goal. So we're all on different, different paths, but we're on the same journey. True. Right? That's so, actually well said. Yeah, <clears throat> makes a lot of sense. I mean, for me, you know, like I was saying, that a career was it is still to just bring some sort of income home and live that's, that's that's a comfortable main, life, and that's, that's the main, main thing. thing. That we're all going towards. But it. don't get me wrong. I totally agree with you guys, <clears> and I'm <throat> sure most of the viewers out there that I do want to do something for the religion. I want to do something that not only will I be you remembered are, for, but you are because you're you're providing your family with sustenance. That risk, that relationship you're having with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, women providing for you, and by the sweat of your brow, the Imams, they would work, they would farm, and there were people who come to them and say, Why do you, like Imam Bakr alayhi salam, and he said, I don't want to extend my hand out to the people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. As in, and, and these were our Imams, and they worked in the fields. There are role models. They're, they're, they're showing us, you know, right? this, is, this is how I am. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you look at society right now, that's not regarded as one of the highest positions. You know what I just noticed about uh, the, this story that you narrated about the Imams? We know that our Imams were very, very intelligent. Yeah. I mean, project managers to the next level, for example, if they wanted, but they chose to do labor instead. Now, is there a reasoning for that? I mean, why are they doing labor when they could have done, they could have ran a business? which I think wouldn't be a problem for them because they're just so intellectual. Even if they didn't have the means or um, I mean, the knowledge, the they just have to read a few things because they, they open up doors for themselves. The doors of knowledge will open up. Yeah. But I think they were trying to perhaps show that there's no shame in labor. There's no shame in, you know, sw in sweating out in the hot sun um, and earning that. It's worship and it's, it's that pure... Um, food that you're bringing in on the Definitely. setting the table for your family. Yeah. I mean, that's how I'm viewing it. It all starts with their intentions. As long as the intentions are there, then you, you, Allah will make a way for you. So, yeah, honestly, bro, don't worry too much about, you know, you haven't got the right path as you, as you wish. Allah will make a way for you. Like, it, he'll make a way for anyone. No, no, very it's, true. Very true. And it's, it's, it's a step-by-step -step process. And yeah, we'll get there in the end, inshallah. inshallah. Guys, we've gone deep, but that's all we have time for today. Until next time.